been a busy morning. Hope you've enjoyed celebrating Jesus Christ, celebrating his love for us, and celebrating what he has done for us and what he continues to do for all of us this morning. Last week, I promised you I'd keep it short, and I didn't. This week, I promise, I promise I'll keep it short this week. So uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about love, though. Over the last four weeks, we've learned a lot. We saw how hope, peace, and joy comes from Jesus Christ, not dependent on our circumstances or dependent on circumstances around us, but it comes from him and only him. But instead of seeking him a lot of times, we go to counterfeit things for hope, joy, and love. And the question then becomes, why would God give us hope? Why would God give us peace? Why would God give us joy? Why would he give us all these things? And the answer comes in one simple word, love. He gives us all these things because he loves us. You see, Jesus came to us in love. Jesus was born to us out of God's love for us. He was sent to us from God in love. He was sent to us from God in love because we needed the hope, peace, and joy in our lives. How do we know that God sent him in peace? I mean, in love, how do we know that God gave him to us for love? Look at Romans 5, 8. Romans 5, 8 says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Why? Because of God's love. And then some consider this the greatest verse, John three sixteen, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You see, God's love is why we have a celebration at Christmas. God's love is why we have a celebration of Jesus Christ's birth. God's love is what gives us hope, peace, and joy in our lives, not just at Christmas, but at all times. Because like God's, like God's hope, like God's peace, and like God's love and joy, love is not counterfeit when it comes from God. When it comes from God, it is true. It is real. There is no greater love than what God gives us through Jesus Christ. Excuse me. <coughs> so this morning, what can we know about Christmas and his love? Number one, his love is available to us all. It is available to all people. I want to go back to Luke chapter 2, verse 10. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. Everyone has God's love available to them. Matthew one twenty three tells us, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his, na his name Emmanuel, which is translated, God with us. Do you see? His love is available to all of us. We can't pick and choose who loves God or who God loves. We can't pick or choose who we want to share God with. God came and he says, My love through Jesus Christ was brought to all people. We live in a world where we're told everyone's not equal, but God says we are equal because I sent my son for all of you. The next great thing about his love is it has no requirements, no requirements. Romans said that while we were still sinners, God died for us. While we were still sinners, whoever believes in Jesus Christ, there are no requirements. Jesus Christ loved us before we were born. Think about that. Before you were born, Christ loved you. He knew you. He loved you. He came to earth because of his love for you. He didn't ask you for a membership. He doesn't ask you for certain rituals to be done. He didn't ask you to say a certain oath to him. He said there is no requirements. All you who are weary and weak come to me. All who want to be saved come to me. He said the only thing I ask you to do is believe. Look at Romans 10, 9 and 10. That if you confess with your mouth that Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For, the heart, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness. And with a mouth, confession is made into salvation. He's telling us, you don't have to do anything. Believe and confess, and that is all. There are no requirements. There's no country club you have to join, no dues you have to pay. There's nothing you have to do. When God sent Jesus Christ that Christmas morning, he did not require anything. Which brings me to this last point, that his love is freely given to us all. His love is freely given to us all. 
You cannot read your Bible to earn salvation. You cannot come to church to earn salvation. Look at what Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 says. 2, 8, and 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. There are too many Christians, too many churches, too many religions in our world today that say you have to earn it. You have to do this and that. And God says, I give you my love freely when Jesus Christ was born that day. My love is free. Religion, churches, men, women, we have made Christmas too difficult. It's simple. God loved us so much that he sent his son, his only son, so that he may walk as a man. So he may die for our sins and our transgressions. To receive this gift, this debt that has been paid, all we have to do is confess and believe. It's simple. God gave us hope through Jesus Christ. He gave us peace in Jesus Christ. He gave us joy in Jesus Christ. Why? Because he loves us. And he still loves us today. And the shepherds show us what we need to do with that love. In Luke 2, 15 through 20, I want to read these to you again this morning. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, and it was told as it was told them. So here's what the shepherds did. Three things the shepherds did really quickly this morning as they found the love of Jesus Christ. They sought Christ. If you love God and you know that God loves you, you will seek Christ. The angels came and the angels said, hey, go find this Savior, this child that was born. They didn't stay in their pews. They didn't stay on their rocks. They didn't stay anywhere. They went and they sought Jesus Christ. The first thing you and I need to do every morning when we wake up is we need to seek Christ. We need to seek him every moment of every day in our life. Find that love that he has shown us. Our problem is, is on Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. We're not going to be seeking Jesus Christ. We're going to be seeking Santa. We're going to be seeking Rudolph. We're going to be seeking Frosty. We're going to be seeking all these things. And the last thing that's going to be on our mind is seeking Christ. But the Bible says the first thing that needs to be on our mind is to seek him. We're too busy, too independent, too worried about what others will think to seek him. But the shepherds weren't. They didn't care. They left the fields. They went out and they sought after Jesus Christ no matter what the cost. You and I need to do that too as we show our love for him. Next, we see that they worshipped him. They worshipped him. When they found him, they worshipped him. We worship Christ by coming to him for salvation. When we find him for salvation, we worship him. We worship him when we come together and pray. We worship him when we sing our songs to him in our hearts by fellowshipping with one another and going and telling others we are worshiping Jesus Christ. This Christmas, we need to understand the love that God has for us and let that love lead us to worship Jesus Christ. And finally, they shared Christ. His love needs to lead us to sharing his word with others. What will you share this Christmas more? Will you share presents? Will you share food? Will you share all these other characters of Christmas? Or will you share Jesus Christ at Christmas this year? What will your love lead you to? You see, God's love should lead us to sharing it with others. Because if we understand his love, we don't want anyone to be without his love today. If we know his love personally, we don't want anyone to be without Jesus Christ. And so we need to seek him, we need to worship him, and we need to share him. You see, Christmas is about the hope, peace, and joy that was given to us through Jesus Christ because God loved us. When we seek him, when we worship him, and when we tell others about him, we show him our love back is what we need to do. So as we celebrate Christmas and we wrap up our Christmas service this morning, I want to ask you, do you love him today? Have you accepted his love today? If you don't have hope, if you don't have peace, 
and you don't have joy in your heart, ask yourself this question, do I have God's love in my life today? Have I allowed his love to come into me? Because once that love comes in, then we should have hope, peace, and joy in our hearts and in our lives. As we celebrate Christmas, I know it's kind of strange to say celebrate Christmas today when we've got all the way to Saturday, but as we celebrate Christmas, it's not a one-day thing. It's a love thing to God. We need to show him our love. And the best way we can do it is to be like the shepherds. Seek him, worship him, and tell others about him. Seek, worship, and share is what we need to do at Christmas. Why? Because we love God and we have his love in us.